Hey everybody, yesterday we read page, we read chapters 23 and 24. Today we're going to read chapters 25 and 26, so we're going to finish our book. So I need you to open up your book to page 169 and follow along with me as I read. Chapter 25. We heard the music before we even got to Gloria Dump's house. We heard it almost a block away. It was guitar playing and singing and clapping. I wonder what's going on, my father said. We walked up to Gloria's sidewalk and around back through her yard and into her kitchen. What we saw was Otis playing his guitar and Miss Franny and Gloria sitting there smiling and singing and Gloria holding Sweetie Pie in her lap. Amanda and Dunlip and Stevie were sitting on the kitchen floor clapping along and having the best possible time. Even Amanda was smiling. I couldn't believe they were so happy when Dixie, when Win Dixie was missing. We didn't find him, I shouted at them. The music stopped and Gloria Dump looked at me and said, Child, we know you didn't find him. You didn't find him because he was right here all along. She took her cane and poked at something under her chair. Come on out of there, she said. There was a snuffle and a sigh. He's asleep, she said. He's plumb wore out. She poked around with her cane again, and Win Dixie stood up from underneath her chair and yawned. Win Dixie, I hollered. Dog, Gertrude squawked. Win Dixie wagged his tail and showed me all his teeth and sneezed. I went pushing past everybody. I dropped to the floor and wrapped my arms around him. Where have you been? I asked him. He yawned again. How did you find him? I asked. Now there's a story, said Miss Franny. Gloria, why don't you tell it? Well, said Gloria Dump, we were all just sitting around waiting on you two, and after I convinced these Dewberry boys that I ain't no scary witch at all, full of spells and potions. She ain't no witch, Stevie said. He shook his bald head. He looked kind of disappointed. Nah, said Dunlap, she ain't, and if she was, she would have turned us into toads by now, he grinned. I could have told you that she wasn't a witch. Witches don't exist said Amanda. They are just myths. All right now, said Gloria. What happened was we got through all them witchy things and then Franny said, why don't we have a little music while we wait for you two to get back? And so Otis played his guitar and woo wee, there ain't a song he don't know. And if he don't know it, he can pick it right up right quick if you hum it to him. He was a gift. He has a gift. Gloria stopped and smiled at Otis and he smiled back. He looked all lit up from the inside. Tell me what happened, Sweetie Pie said. Tell what happened, Sweetie Pie said. Tell about the dog. So, said Gloria, Franny and me, we started thinking about all these songs we knew from when we was a girls. We got Otis to play them, and we started singing them, teaching the words to these children. And then somebody sneezed, Sweetie Pie shouted. That's right, said Gloria. Somebody sneezed, and it wasn't none of us. So we looked around, wondering who it was, thinking that maybe we got us a burglar in the house. We looked around, and we didn't see nothing. So we started into singing again, and sure enough, there was another big achoo. Sounded like it was coming from my bedroom. So I sent Otis in there. I said, Otis, go on in there and see who's sneezing. So Otis went, and do you know what he found? I shook my head. When Dixie, shouted Sweetie Pie. That dog ears was all hid underneath my bed, squeezed under there like the world was about to end. But he was smiling like a fool every time he heard Otis play the guitar, smiling so hard he sneezed. My daddy laughed. Notice how she calls him my daddy and my father instead of the preacher now. It is true, Miss Franny said. It's the truth, said Stevie. Dunlip nodded and smiled right at me. So? Gloria Dump said. Otis played his guitar right to that dog and a little bit at a time when Dixie came creeping out from underneath the bed. He was covered in dust, said Amanda. He looked like a ghost, said Dunlip. Yeah, said Sweetie Pie, just like a ghost. Mm-hmm, said Gloria. Looked just like a ghost. Anyway, the storm stopped after a while and your dog settled in under my chair and fell asleep. And that's where he's been ever since, just waiting on you to come back and find him. When Dixie, I said, I hugged him so tight he wheezed. We were out there whistling and calling for you, and you were right here all along. Thank you, I said to everybody. Well, 
said Gloria Dump. We didn't do nothing. We just sat here and waited and sang some songs. We all got to be good friends. Now, the punch ain't nothing but water and the egg salad sandwiches got tore up by the rain. You got to eat them with a spoon if you want egg salad. But we got pickles to eat and lick Miss Longins and we got we still got a party going on. My daddy pulled out a kitchen chair and sat down. Otis, he said, do you know any hymns? I know some, said Otis. You hum it, said Miss Franny, nodding her head, and he can play it. So my daddy started humming something, and Otis started picking it up, picking it out of his guitar, and when Dixie wagged his tail and lay down underneath Gloria's chair. I looked around the room at different faces, and I felt my heart swelling up inside with pure happiness. I'll be back in a minute, I said, but they were all singing now and laughing, and when Dixie was snoring, so no one heard me. Chapter 26. Outside, the rain had stopped and the clouds had gone away, and the sky was so clear it seemed like I could see every star ever made. I walked all the way to, all the, way to the back of Gloria Dump's yard. I walked back there and looked at her mistake tree. The bottles were quiet. There wasn't a breeze, so they were just hanging there. I looked at the tree, and then I looked up at the sky. Mama, I said, just like she was standing right beside me. I know 10 things about you, and that's not enough. That's not near enough. But Daddy's going to tell me more. I know he will. Now that he knows you're not coming back, he misses you, and I miss you. But my heart doesn't feel empty anymore. It's full all the way up. I'll still think about you, I promise, but probably not as much as I did this summer. That's what I said that night underneath Gloria Dump's mistake tree. And after I was done saying it, I stood there staring up at the sky, looking at the constellations and planets. And then I remembered my own tree, the one Gloria had helped me plant. I hadn't looked, a bit, I hadn't looked at it for a long time. I went crawling around on my hands and knees, searching for it. And when I found it, I was surprised at how much it had grown. It was still small. It still looked like a plant that more like a plant than a tree, but the leaves and the branches felt real strong and good and ripe. And I was down there on my knees when I heard a voice say, are you praying? I looked up. It was Dunlip. No, I said, I'm not praying. I'm thinking. He crossed his arms and looked down at me. What about? He asked. All kinds of different things, I said. I'm sorry that I called you and Stevie bald-headed babies. That's all right, he said. Gloria told me to come out here and get you. I told you she wasn't a witch. I know it, he said. I knew it all along. I was just teasing you. Oh, I said. I looked at him close. It was hard to see him good in the dark side, in the dark yard. Ain't you ever going to stand up, he asked. Yeah, I said. And then he surprised me. He did something that I never in a million years thought a Dewberry boy would do. He held out his hand to me and helped me up, and I took it, and I let him pull me to my feet. I'll race you back to the house, Dunlip said, and he started to run. Okay, I shouted, but I'm warning you, I'm fast. We ran, and I beat him. I touched the corner, corner of Gloria Dump's house right before he did. You shouldn't be running around in the dark, said Amanda. She was standing on the porch looking at us. You could trip over something. Aw, Amanda, said Dunlap. He shook his head. Aw, Amanda, I said too. And then I remembered Carson, and I felt bad for her. I went up on the porch and took hold of her hand and pulled on her. Come on, I said. Let's go inside. India Opal, Daddy said when me and Amanda and Dunlap walked in. Are you here to sing some songs with us? Yes, sir, I said. Only I don't know that many songs. We'll teach you, he said. He smiled at me real big. It was a good thing to see. That's right, said Gloria Dump. We will. Sweetie Pie was still sitting in her lap, but her eyes were closed. Care for a litmus longin? Miss Franny asked, passing me the bowl. Thank you, I told her. I took me a litmus longin and I unwrapped it and I put it in my mouth. Do you want a pickle? Otis asked, holding up his big jar of pickles. No, thank you, I said. Not right now. When Dixie came out from underneath Gloria Dump's chair, he sat down next to me and he leaned into me the same as I was leaning into my daddy. And Amanda stood right there beside me, and when I looked over at her, she didn't look pinch-faced at all to me. 
Dunlip cracked his knuckles and said, well, are we going to sing or what? Yeah, Stevie echoed. Are we going to sing or what? Let's sing, said Sweetie Pie, opening her eyes and sitting up straight. Let's sing for the dog. Otis laughed and strummed his guitar, and the flavor of litmus longin opened in my mouth like a flower blooming, all sweet and sad. And then Otis and Gloria and Stevie and Miss Franny and Dunlip and Amanda and Sweetie Pie and my daddy all started to sing a song, and I listened careful so I could learn it right. The end.